What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode three of Sun City Sounds, presented by El Paso Creatives. We're coming to you live from Power at the Pass here in El Paso, Texas. My name is Richie Marufo. And I'm Jordan Taylor, and today we have an amazing artist with us that goes by Xavier Wise. He sings R&B and Neo Soul. He has a beautiful voice, the voice of an angel. And we also have a local business, Savor Tooth, some yummy beef jerky and some fruit. That's right. Today's episode is going to be savory and wise. So let's go and tune in for his first set. Yo, take it away. you tell me what I'm supposed to do? No sutras or suitors, no, no one else will do. I'm still stuck loving, loving you. What's up, Xavier? That was a beautiful first set. I loved it. It was smooth. It made me feel a little bit. It got me in my feels. You know when that happens to me? I cry I like a to get bit. my you, like, you cry. I like to snack. I get my snack on. And that's a perfect transition for our, our guest today. We have Carlos, right? Tell us, tell us a little bit more about Carlos. So, Carlos, you make snacks, and it's called Savor Tooth, and it's beef jerky and freeze-dried fruit, dehydrated yes, fruit. Yes. Um, Best way to put it, uh, it's jerky, simple, dried up meat. The fruit, I call them fruit chewies just because um, they are, like, you're going to be chewing on them for quite a bit because they are going to be delicious. You're going to savor them for every bite and every minute. So what got you started on this endeavor on of yours? this, my mom actually got me started on this part of my business. Main reason why is because my mom is a... Uh, at home nutritionist or self-taught um 
so she always she's always have these like quinoa chai tea kind of like pastries that she always wants to do and everything so one day we were just messing in the kitchen and my mom started making beef jerky which was for the mexican version is carne seca because um and then of course as my dad my sister and all that we were just enjoying them with minchiladas and we just continued making them and then it just got to the point where i started making them and then i just started making them to sell because i started getting like oh man these are really good and then my friends are kind of like oh dude these are really good and they're all drinking their beers we're having a good time <laughs> so it just became kind of like a snack and then it just grew to a snack you can take wherever you go you can walk between bars you can just take it anywhere really <laughs> post bar snacks yeah pretty uh, much like, and it's okay i got my beef jerky guys i'm good and like originally since i do live downtown and originally i did want to get a food truck COVID happened that backtracked for a bit and so i just wanted this just originally started as i wanted to get my name out there like um so that people's like oh you know what that like saber tooth jerky and snacks you know what and then like i don't know we're like hey guys i made a food truck and they already know the quality of product that I'm already releasing. So they're like, hey, you know what? Whatever he's going to serve in his food truck is going to be as good as well. So people can understand uh, an attention to quality, maybe kind of an experimentation with different types of flavors. Yes. Um, the flavors that I have here are um, pretty much unique to my own, except probably the teriyaki. That's uh, not a cut and paste, but a cut reamped. And then made it my own kind of thing. Cool. I know nothing about about making jerky or, or dried <laughs> fruit. Is there an art behind that? No, it's patience. There's like uh, I, uh, this one. That, that is that, an art form. Okay, yeah. It's um, it's not like you're. It's not cooterie. It's not um. You're not. What is it? You're not dehydrated. Well, you are dehydrated, but I mean, um, you're not curing. That's the word I wanted to use. You're not. I'm not curing any of these. It's just pure dehydration because. If I was doing charcuteries, just as like um, bruschetta, as well as salami, pepperoni, and all of those, then that I, I would form like, you know what, that's an art form because that's six to plus years mm -hmm. of waiting for that to cure properly. I, am I not appreciating that stuff <laughs> as much as I should be, first of all? <laughs> but, but secondly, you had mentioned how, how the pandemic kind of threw your plans off a little bit not not destroyed them but no you've been able to adapt uh, and, and evolve and i think that's a really important quality mm -hmm. how uh, how have you seen your business kind of start up during these times you know it's people, uh, people you know hitting you hitting you up and how do you adapt well it um it's co uh, once i was saving up money for a food truck to get myself out there and all that but then once um COVID hit it went from having this big plan to having grand opening, having already had my menu set ready to go to, you know what, just doing small little things here and there. I did do small caterings for a couple of friends that I know and then people who know my friends. So I've done barbecue caterings as well as partying caring, ca um, caterings where I have up to 50 people. I think that was the max I put myself. And then it just wanted to be more of a, day by day kind of thing where i can do this every day and see where i can go to see where i can sell it great yeah it's amazing so what you're saying is if people want to be catered yes. you know they can hit you <laughs> up yes now if, if anything at least this is episode three but by the time you're watching episode four hopefully you're sitting there with your bag <laughs> of some savior tooth goodies and you're, you're doing some munching maybe a enchilada like you mentioned oh yeah of course uh that's what the beef jerkies are for because uh right now i have four specific flavors we have our caveman jalapeno lime lemon pepper and teriyaki the caveman lemon pepper and jalapeno lime uh, are more of a new reamped flavors that i decided to make so the jalapeno lime that one's completely new i've have not seen anyone make that kind of flavor as well as the seasonings for that is purely homemade it's yeah. not store-bought the best the 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 most store-bought that it is is buying the jalapenos and poblanos for it okay. that's OG. about it so to get this stuff while you're at home is it a pickup delivery for this it's mostly um delivery so you can um, contact me through Facebook and Instagram at savertooth915. 
S A V O R E T O O T H. 915. Uh, you, it's going to be the same picture as my logo. You can also email me at savertooth915 at gmail.com. That one's more for inquiries such as for catering. So if you want to do a catering, I recommend you contact me through email and I'll be able to help you out depending on what kind you want to do. I mostly try to do uh, and push my um, smoked barbecue that I do. All okay. right. Awesome. Right on. Appreciate that, man. Thank I'm you. definitely looking forward into working on my pandemic panza and, and opening up a bag or two. <laughs> and uh, yo, hopefully you guys can check that out as well. Should we go back and check in on Xavier? Absolutely. On Xavier. After that amazing performance from Xavier Wise, thank you so much. Carlos decided to bring us back here for a little surprise. What what's going on? Well, yes. Um, as as I heard, that was a really great performance. I decided to bring snacks to the performance because you know, if you ever go to a show or anything, you gotta have something to munch on. So that's what we have here. I brought you a sample of everything that I have to offer at the moment from our all of our jerkies as well as all of our fruits. How exciting. Is this going to be like a little blindfold or blind taste test? I feel like I'm not worthy, but yeah, let's let's dig into these. (laughs) How how do we go about this? Well, I say um, let's start off with the jerkies and see how that goes. So three jerkies? How many jerkies do we have? We got right here. It'll be four. Four. Okay. It's October 2020. You're about to watch us munch on on TV, guys. (laughs) Cool. So which one? Would you like us to go ahead and go well, first? Well, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna start you off with my best seller, which would be this one right here. I'm going to keep the name blank for now, just, and then I'm going to let you decide. <laughs> if you like it, you can savor it. Promotion. Um, but, yeah, um, let's give it a try. Welcome to the Savor Flavor Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor the Savor. All right. <laughs> So, yeah. for this one, 
Is this your favorite, by chance? Yes, that is well. That is one of my top favorites of my jerk, my own jerky, because it's um, very simple. Like the seasonings for that one, that's the one with the most seasonings that I have. Oh. It's a uh, one of my most seasoned jerky. It's kind of a, a peppery spice kind of thing. That's what I was exactly gonna say. Mm -hmm. It's a peppery spice kind of thing. Yeah. Nailed it. I'm like, I hope I can't be heard chewing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that tear right there. You went full in. This is really baby. good. <laughs> Takes me back to camping trips. So. <laughs> I've never been mm. camping. Same. You know what? You're spoiled. Mm. Right? Privileged. Going out to the woods? <laughs> 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 Away from society? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anyway, wow. So I taste, uh, yeah, I taste um, mm -hmm. definitely very flavorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the spices for this one is um, crushed bell peppers um, as well as um, fennel. Ironically, people don't associate fennel with actually a spice, but as in a kick, but it has. Mm -hmm. It does have a kick. What did you say the, the different names of the jerkies were? This one's called Caveman. This is Caveman. Caveman yes. Yeah. This one's definitely really good. <laughs> I'm going to call it the troglodyte kickback. <laughs> Not there yet, but mm. maybe one of the flavors I make in the future. It sits well. That's good for uh, maybe Sunday football. Yeah, that, kind of football. yeah that one. Uh, that one's mostly, uh, and that's a very pungent, um, very, like I said, seasoned jerky. So I mostly uh, associate it with a very good, like, if you're going to go with like a Sunday football, if you have yourself a beer, your stouts, like a heavier drink or more of a more like you're going with a barbecue like you're having like making your burgers and you want a snack on the side to get you prepped yeah well i would like four bags well i'm ready to go <laughs> let me go get them <laughs> and then for the second one this is actually my new flavor that just released about a week and a half ago i released at an event at um shaggy shaggy dog brewery and this at the old sheep dog yes oh, yeah. there okay. it is sheep like dog i was like shaggy i know it had <laughs> a dog like they're in, in competition in <laughs> and this one this one's a new flavor that just came out um the seasoning on that one kind of like i was saying before it's the jalapeno poblano that one is a completely new mix you can that one actually is i make it by hand and you really can't buy this seasoning at store whatsoever. Look at that. You get a good shot of that? The texture. One of these days we'll have the technology where you can taste it too. You can push a button. Oh my <laughs> God. That might not yeah. work. Yeah. Virtual taste there. testings? Do you want to? Yeah, Star Trek style, cheers, just cheers, push a button. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Ah. Yeah. I can smell the yeah. poblano. Yeah. <laughs> so this one originated by uh, mostly my Mexican heritage, as in you want something spicy with lemon, mm -hmm. as in you put in everything in our fruits, our soups, our meats. So this one's very like, this one I pretty much made it for minchiladas. Mm. I want to say something, but I have got a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I agree wholeheartedly. I would love to throw that in one of those. Oh, yeah. This is my favorite one so far. Yeah. It just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> like, <laughs> do not disappoint. Oh, I thank you. Yeah, I like the way the, the lemon. The l sorry. I like the way that the lemon comes out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. As you bite into it and. Yeah, uh, that, it's a that explosion. Yeah, it is. Because uh, um, there's two different types. For the lemon, it's uh, marinated in lime juice for three hours and then um it's it's a preserving uh, well not preserving but it's a technique that a lot of people use it for preserving food it's called citric acid which has a very sour very limiting flavor to it so that's how you get that extra little sour kick to it with the lemon you're a man who knows this stuff yes by the way guys just i know you can't taste it <laughs> but man step up your jerky game <laughs> yeah <laughs> yo leave that corner store stuff behind it's time to move on go local support people like carlos and uh yeah that was so good 
Well, and then I we're not getting paid, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> oh, I'm not. <laughs> We so trust me. We, ju- we just became a meme. It's like, what? <laughs> You're getting paid? <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, that one. Well, um, these two next flavors are more of a just traditional flavors that come from jerky as well as one just like from wings, the uh, lemon pepper. And that's this one right here. I kind of said the name, but <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's more of like the mystery of how it's going to taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one, um, it's kind of, um, as you're going to bite into it, kind of has the same lemon part as the jalapeno lime because um, I decided to re this flavor because the first sets that I made, even though um, I did make a seasoning, that had more lemon taste to it, as in I used lemon zest as well as dehydrated that, grind that up, mix it with salt and pepper, but it just wasn't enough for me. So I reamped it, and this is the new version. Lemon pepper is one of my f- paper. Lemon pepper <laughs> <laughs> is one of my favorites. So here we go. Even good on paper, right? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are we an ASMR channel now? <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's find out. I love lemon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the this one was just pretty much just. A regular flavor to go to that everyone will enjoy. Like if you're if you love lemon pepper wings, I know you'll definitely love these as well. You got me. Oh, I thank you. I just want to dive into like the science of jerky. <laughs> you no, know, like does the marinade and the substance like does it affect the way it you know? It yes. It? So, a, a quick science on that is uh, marinating. Depending on what kind of marinades you make. If you more if you use more of the pH balance, such as the pineapple juice, orange juice, lime juice, will break down the proteins as well as the other sugars, as well as when you dehydrate it. So it does a different texture as well as if you go for more of a carbonation, such as beer, sodas, and other things, it breaks it down in a different way. Mm-hmm. But then also the way you dehydrate it, how long you dehydrate it, that's where it makes also the diff- big difference. These were dehydrated for about six hours and 30 minutes. That's my like point that I always want to reach. Um, seven hours, it becomes a little bit, a bit dry, but it's still really good, but more on the chewy side. If you go more like around six hours, it becomes more just like more beefy. And, but, I, but I wanted to accentuate the flavors a little bit more. So that's why I went for the 630. There's the art of it. You're like, you got to get that precise, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> Notice you go too far. It's like, yeah, I don't want to really eat that. But, yeah, because I noticed uh, this one kind of, like, crumbled a little easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with this one, the reason why is because of the s- the amount of salt salt that it has. Because um, salt is used also for a lot of curing because it absorbs water. It loves to attract water outside of it as it's curing and everything. Makes sense. Yeah, and then this will be the final um, jerky flavor right here. This one's more of a savory kind of one. Okay, I have my guesses. Oh yeah, creme brulee jerky. Oh, no. <laughs> that that'll be that'll be a more of a sweet jerky Ghost right there. Ghost pepper jerky? What? <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> should have waited. I've actually gotten people to request me to make a jerky that's like spicy, <laughs> like it's really spicy in the Scoven style. What's really spicy? Um, well, one of uh, one of my friends challenged me to make uh, a jerky that's really spicy and kick, because they're just like, I love heat, and I'm like, all right, cool, is, give is me a like week. Like no, a oh, okay, <laughs> no, it's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, oh, here we go. I know which one this one is. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> lady marmalade. I'm just gonna go ahead. <laughs> Some teriyaki. Yeah. So this one I decided to go with more of a sweet flavor since teriyaki is mostly made with um, brown sugar, of course, um, soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, a little bit of ginger, uh, sesame oil, regular vegetable oil, and a little bit of a crushed peppers. But it's mostly of a like more of a sweet, savory kind of jerky that we have for that one. So what's the most difficult part about making jerky? It's being patient as well as making the fruit chewies. It's being patient. You have to, since right now I'm cutting everything by hand, um, I have to make sure I cut them as, well, I am cutting them 
same size every time. So that's um, a lot of t uh, knife techniques as well right there. And then once you get the process going and once they're done, you have to wait until they um, cool down uh, recently because the muscle fibers in the meat of jerky, if you eat them fresh, I, ironically, that's also one of like the best times to eat them because the muscle fibers are still very loose. They're very legion. Um, so you can, they're not very tuggy, but they're very succulent. But once they do calm down, that's where you can start banging them. That's where you can start holding them. And that's where you can make them last for longer. Nice. Awesome. Well, you've got a really great setup here, man, from the bagging to the process. I was glad that we were able to do a little taste test. And if you guys want to test it out yourselves, you can get all four flavors and try them out. He delivers. Just do what we did. Yes, yeah. I do. So once again, we can find them. Savor tooth. Just look that up. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man, for letting Thank us try you that. Thank so right. much. Thank you for having me. I think, uh, I think Xavier's got more music. Let's go and go back with him. Let's go. Episode 3 of Sun City Sounds has been brought to you by El Paso Creatives and Real Passion Media. Xavier, thank you so much for that amazing performance. Can you please let the audience and us know where we can find you and your music on social media? So on uh, Instagram, you can find me at Xavier underscore wise. And the same goes for my YouTube. Uh, I'd really appreciate subscription and following me on there. Um, Twitter is the same. And um, you can also follow me on Spotify. I'm about to release some new music on Apple, everything like that. How exciting. So what would you say 
got you into the music industry? So what got me into the music industry at first was um, some work that I did with Soundstage 9. Before that, I uh, ended up recording a, a video that we posted on Facebook that got quite a bit of attention. And I realized maybe that that was you know, the path I should take. So um, upon doing so, I was noticed by Soundstage 9 here in El Paso. And um, from there on, I recorded a Christmas song with them. And it just gave me like the momentum, you know, mm -hmm. the momentum to keep going forward. And two years later, three years later, actually, here I am. Great, yeah. Sh uh, shout out to, to Soundstage 9, by the way. I know uh, at a local studio, lots of great musicians who work there. Um, you know, I saw that part of your musical journey that took you, took you to L.A. What was that like? What would you experience? Because you're a young artist, man. Not too many people just take off and try and do it, but you did. What Thank was that you. like? Um, I'm not going to lie. I, it really took a, a leap of faith, but it taught me that at the end of every leap of faith is, you know, a great result. And um, shh, not bad. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> no, good. That's great. You're good. Uh, right here? Okay. Yeah. Oh, the camera's like right there. Yeah, <laughs> LA, man. <laughs> I'm like, and where I'm was I? <laughs> West Coast. You're, you're from here, right? Yeah, I'm originally from here. Um, I graduated from Socorro High School. I was part of uh, the choir, basketball team, all that. And um, when I graduated, I, I decided to leave to LA, um, where I just, I was lucky enough to meet, you know, the right people. I was put into a very loving space, you know, the Voices of Creation choir. Um, it's a soul jazz type of choir, you know, we, we practice gratitude, we sing about gratitude, what it is to love, you know, yourself, love others, and, and share that through music. That's great. And, and is that one of the biggest crowds you've ever performed in front of? Yeah, it definitely was. For uh, New Year's Eve LA, we performed for 50,000 people, but there was 75,000 in attendance. It was wow. definitely a dream come true, in a sense. But it made me realize that I wanted to do that even more and again and you know feel the fire growing yeah within. definitely so you mentioned you're going to put out some mu new music but I wanted to ask you a question about the latest song you released mm -hmm. so I knew is a song about and sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's okay so sorry I got no, nervous it's okay, it's okay it's okay shake it out yeah so I knew is about realizing upon meeting certain people what love actually is. Because I had one idea of it before, um, just one idea of, of love, you know. But upon meeting like certain people and being around different vibes, I kind of realized like it was at that point that I truly knew what love was. Mm -hmm. Nice. Man, I gotta hear this song. <laughs> it's really, really nice. I, yeah, I, I, I yeah. liked it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I can hear it again, you know. Um, so, you know, you have a, a very, like, your neo soul, soulful sound. I love it. How did that develop? Like, who'd you listen to growing up that, that nurtured that sound? So, um, one of the biggest influences for that sound itself would be Snow Allegra. Um, I've had a few interactions with her via social media, you know, Instagram. But uh, ever since 2017, when I heard her song uh, sampled on a track by Drake, it was like I, I had to find out who that voice was. And once I did, uh, it was just like I was completely inspired by her. Snow Allegra, right. yeah. Beautiful. So I have one more question. I know COVID came out of the blue, obviously, for everybody. Definitely. But as an artist, how did that affect your approach to music and performing and just interacting with people and people in the music industry itself for you? So um, I had to transition just like everyone else to like a more social media based um, approach. But um, it honestly took me out of the music scene from Los Angeles. I actually had to come back to El Paso due to that because mm -hmm. I was actually out there on my own and everything. But, um, you know, it, I feel like it gave me even an opportunity here to, to get to know more people out of El Paso come back home, be able to reach out to to locals, you know, and, and I myself, you know, it feels good to be home. It's mm -hmm. like just a, a different vibe than when I was in L.A. It was a little bit more fast paced and yeah. came back, slowed down, mm -hmm. get together myself and definitely put out some more music. It's a great thing as an artist to, to be able to do that. Now, uh, I have one last question and it's it's a fun one. You don't have to think too hard about it, but mm -hmm. maybe people at, at home watching right, want to know. 
uh, what's your dream collab? We'll tag them right now. After <laughs> we'll tag them like, yo, make sure to collab. Who do, you, who, do you, who, do you, who do you see yourself working with? My dream collab. I could go on with a whole list. Pull out a list. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'd, I'd have to say I mentioned her before, Snow Allegra. Are you hear that? <laughs> We're looking at you, Snow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it, man. I really enjoy the music. I love uh, loved getting to get to know you and meet you. And hopefully you guys go follow him, go listen to that music, and, and draw those streams up. You know what I'm saying? Support your local artists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of, the, of Sun City Sounds. Later. <laughs>